warning. This episode contains strong language. Yeah. Sing us something there on your guitar. Well, come on. <laughs> no, sing. You sing. You sing. Hey, how about Bye Bye Love? Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye My Holiness. Now I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. I'm going to go. Bye 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 there goes, there my, goes baby. my baby with someone, someone new. new. She sure looks happy. I sure am blue. It's weird. There's a delay. Is a yeah. delay totally? It's like, here's <laughs> the reason that I'm so free. My loving baby done peed on me. No. I <laughs> Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Patrick. All right, let's get into it. Uh, my guests today are George Dukas and Rudy Gatlin. Okay, so this is sort of a special episode, something uh, new we're going to start doing, uh, where I just bring on two different, uh, you know, celebrities and, and we have just sort of a roundabout discussion. And so in this instance, it was two um, country musicians. And, you know, Rudy Gatlin from the Gatlin brothers, a legend, right? Uh, Just a complete legend. And George Dukas, also a legend uh, in my mind, maybe, maybe just a little younger. So, you know, just come from different um, generations, I, I guess I would say. So it was just really cool to see them interact uh, together. They had ne- never met. Um, and we just talked country music and had a lot of fun. Um, it was really, really great. Um, so it's a really cool conversation. Uh, you know, Gatlin Brothers fans are going to love it. Dukas fa- fans are going to love it. We just had a, a great conversation. No politics, no nonsense, just music, life, you know, fun. That, that's what it was. Telling old stories, uh, you know, tinkering around on the guitars, talking music. It was awesome. So I hope to do more things uh, like that. So yeah, great episode. Uh, and also, you know, um, you know, w- with a heavy heart, uh, you know, hate to say this, um, you know, uh, Rudy's, uh, the Gatlin's uh, father passed away. William Wayne Curley Gatlin uh, passed away at 93 um, years old. So, um, you know, this was last week and um, yeah, just, you know, our sincerest uh, condolences go out to the Gatlin family um, during this time. So, you know, if you have a moment, you know, send a, send them a message, um, you know, through social media or something uh, that'd be really nice. So, you know, we're, we're thinking about you, Rudy and the guys, um, you know, just so sorry uh, that this happened. Uh, I lost my father five years ago and yeah, I still think about him every day, to be honest with you. So uh, my heart goes out to you and, and your family. So, yeah. So, you know, and and we did this episode actually, you know, before his father passed away and, and, you know, coincidentally at the end of the episode, he talks about having to go pick up his father. So that that's kind of a, you know, bittersweet moment, I guess, at this point um, in in the podcast. Um, But you can tell how much he loves his father and how much he still cares about him. And they're such a close family. And that's very inspiring, uh, to be honest with you. So I know they're going to miss him. Um, And, uh, and I get it. So, you know, my again, my best to 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 you guys and the family and to the Rudy's uh, to the Rudy's to the Gatlins. And um, yeah, so Hard out to you guys, all right, uh, from the podcast and everybody here. So next thing, real quick, before we get to this episode, I, I'm gonna something new. I'm gonna start doing, which is, you know, we're, we're sponsored by Texas Real Food, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, they they produce this show, um, 
and it's a fantastic uh, website. You know, you always hear it uh, at the end of the podcast. We we talk about it and what it is. But um, you know, it's basically a site where you you know directory, right? Where you go in and you put in your zip code, and you can just find all the coolest places around you. It's really that simple. That that uh, now this is a difference. The coolest places around you. What what places, Patrick? Okay, not just any place. Obviously, food related, right? It's called Texas Real Food. But places in Texas that are serving like organic, fresh, artisanal food. Okay, fresh food, natural food. You know, you're not going to find Jack, the nearest Jack in the Box, okay, on there near you. Okay, this is like, you know, locally owned uh, farm to marketplaces, butchers, um, you know, places like that, restaurants that are like that. It's really, really cool. Um, you know, just just a really cool site. So anyway, uh, check that out, Um And so what I'm going to do is it, they always post these things on their social media, which that's awesome. Uh, they do these, you know, Texas real food, just their facts, right? They just put out food facts. So I just thought it'd be fun to start, uh, you know, throwing some of these out every episode, but I, I guess, uh, you know, so let's get to it. So anyway, Texas real food fact number one, cucumbers are 90% excuse me, cucumbers are 96% water. Okay. That's crazy. Yes, that is true. So you can use these facts with your friends like, eh, you know, anyway. Uh, okay. Next fact, over 600 pasta shapes worldwide. Okay. Over 600 pasta shapes worldwide. That's crazy. Uh, next fact, number three, the fruit from the prickly pear is called tuna. Bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know any of this stuff. Uh, I knew there was a lot of pasta, but not that much. And the prickly pear tuna, I didn't know that. Um, especially about the cucumbers. Okay, this is the next one for Texas. Okay, what 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 do you think? Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, what do you think is the state fruit of Texas? I'll give you a few seconds here to sort of in your mind put that together. All right, what do you think is the state fruit of Texas? Okay. All right. The answer, grapefruit. I did not know that. Grapefruit. Grapefruit is a state fruit of Texas. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I don't know what what would I've guessed. Maybe peach, probably is what would have been that that was my guess. You know, I thought peaches. Um, so anyway, there you go. Grapefruit, Texas fruit food facts. You can start hearing these on every podcast. Uh, and also, uh, you know, look, there, there's also a cool resource on there where they do these um, articles and stuff. So I'm going to start giving you guys a cool article every time as well. And this one is especially pertinent to right now. So we just had Veterans Day, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, last week. Uh, so this is, you can go on there, go to texasrealfood.com slash discover. And there's an article about eight veteran owned farms and ranches in Texas that you can support. Okay. So really, really cool. Um, you can check those out. There, there's more, I'm sure, you know, definitely, but these are just eight we, we picked and a uh, great article. Um, and we got a lot of writers uh, that are writing articles on there. So there's just a lot of stuff to check out. So again, go check that article out, texasrealfood.com slash discover, get that article and more. Oh, also, don't forget, go to our website, uh, thelonestarplate.com, um, and you can find everything out about the podcast. As you've noticed, we've switched sort of uh, our uh, how many episodes we're doing a week. So we were doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now we're doing just Tuesday and Thursday. But the reason we're doing that is we're just putting more into each episode. Okay, so we're, we're coming back for, for what will be season three in 2021. And we're just starting that now a little bit early, uh, but that's going to be the format moving forward. So yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and uh, new episodes. And yeah, we're just going to be putting more into each episode, you know, these sort of things, more facts, more things. Uh, we're also going to be doing um, live episodes coming up. That's right. Live episodes, um, you know, socially distance, obviously everything uh, following regulations and everything like that. We're going to be working with a bar called the Far Out Lounge here in Austin. Um, now there'll be more details as soon as I get them. We'll be I just had the first meeting. So, um, you know, I've been working with the guys at Austin all day podcast. So check them out. I've been working with those guys and we're going to be, uh, and I just met them as well. We're going to be doing these live episodes, uh, you know, of the podcast, you know, with the musician or band, uh, they play a couple songs. We, we do a little interview, you know, mini interview, right? 10, 15 minutes. They play another couple songs. We talk to them again, you know, something just very cool. Something just a little bit different. 
Um, so yeah, that's going to be exciting. We're going to be throwing out bonus episodes, that sort of stuff. So we we'll always have the two episodes coming out and then other stuff on top of it that will be thrown out just here and there. Special episodes, two-part episodes. There, we got so many cool things coming up, guys. We've been brainstorming like crazy. So I'm really excited about the new season in 2021. We're going to be finishing out the year strong. we got so many great episodes, so many great interviews uh, coming up. It's unbelievable. All right, so let's enjoy the episode. Uh, Rudy Gatlin from the Gatlin Brothers and George Dukas. Enjoy. Man, Rudy, you're in a great mood today. I love this, man. This Are we exciting. doing this thing? Are we on? We're doing this Good. thing. Yeah, we're on. George uh, just sent me a text message just actually a few minutes ago, so he should be on here any second uh, that he was getting down into his man cave, as he put it. Uh, to get ready. He's got a cool setup. Uh, hopefully it's the last setup I saw him in last time. He's got all his amps, guitars back there. Really, really cool really? setup. Yeah, really great setup. Ha do you know George at all? Have you met him before? George Dukas? Yeah. No, I don't think I do. Uh, is he a Texas artist, yep. basically? Yeah, lives in uh, Nashville there. To, you know. Oh, he, oh, he lives, oh, he's in Nashville. He's trying to make it Nashville. Oh, no, he already... You know, yeah, he's well known. I think you guys are going to find that you somehow know the same people or know this, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We probably guarantee. Well, I, I say we do. Uh, there have been a lot of changes <laughs> since we first came here in the early 70s. Yeah. I mean, holy cow. They've had three and four and five turnovers of executives marketing people you know at the record companies and and vps and you know there aren't any that are still around when we first came here or even in the probably the late 70s or early 80s or mid 80s i dare say you know even going back to the 90s there probably aren't any you know all the jimmy bowens yeah all the uh uh, uh those guys some other you know how long does the tenure last for record execs, more, more, more or less? Is it like a seven-year stretch, 10-year? Good question. Uh, I, I haven't researched that. I don't know. Some used to hang around quite a bit. you know. Yeah. For, I, I, and, and what happened was we left and we quit touring in 92. <clears throat> Excuse me. We, uh, uh, Larry did New York. I did a thing in Branson, some Broadway stuff, you know. And then we went to a theater from 94 to 98. Then Larry moved back to Austin. I moved to Dallas. Steve stayed here. But we kind of left the business, you know, and didn't do anything for quite some time. I mean, it was 2001 before we started, you know, doing a few dates again after all those years. And I was in Dallas raising kids. Yeah. So I literally didn't keep up with it much. And today, now that we're back, I'm back in Nashville and we're more involved in, in uh, recording and TV and back in things going on. It's hard to keep up with all of it. I mean, there are so many young artists, really good young artists and, uh, a lot to go along with all of us old guys that are still around <laughs> and what's ever trying to keep up with everybody. It's, it's tough. It's a tough, you know, tough deal to do. So I, I don't know young uh, George, uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm excited to anxious. hear, you know, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, hear his I'm part. Absolutely. I'm, you know, I'm actually hoping to do more podcasts like this. We've been discussing what we want to do for 2021 and, you know, just how to change things up on the podcast. You know, you start growing, you, you know, the show goes, it expands, want to give more options to the listeners. And I thought, you know, it'd be great to start getting two artists, you know, two celebrities together who may or may not know each other and just talk, have conversations, open up. You just see what happens um, could be fascinating. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. really excited. And I had such well, a great time with both of you guys last time. So I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. Yeah, we did this a couple of months ago, didn't we? Yeah, the, yeah. And, back uh, in the summer? It was in the summer, yeah. Yeah, you guys were doing your, you know, anniversary thing. You guys were going to do that that big live stream, you know, had to be live stream, unfortunately. Uh, with oh, everything. but fortunately, you know, we talked about that. Yeah. Fortunately, because I'd been wanting to do that for 10 years. Well, that's we finally true. Got our, yeah, we finally got around to it. And hopefully, 
we'll do the Christmas show from the Franklin Theater. Oh, nice. December 19 and 20. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting to hear from them to see if they are going to open back up. Well, they're not going to open up. The word is they've closed down. But there was a maybe. Maybe. We'll look at it, they said. Yeah. So if they'll open that theater back up, we'll live stream out there getting boys Christmas <laughs> show. Merry Christmas. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Wow. That'll yeah, be it, different. Something we've been doing for. 79, how, when did we start that? 1980, say? Wow. 40 years? Say, wow. we started it. I was born we, in 79. <laughs> what am I doing talking to this guy here? He's a punk kid. He's just a punk kid. I'm a big time star. I'm a big country music star. I'm talking to this punk kid. He's one year old. We were Back in 79, I was, I hope I'm not burning up my soup over there. <laughs> I was hell on wheels in 1979, buddy. Whoa. Those are the yeah. times, huh? The 70s. We won't, yeah. You're like, well, we won't get into that. We won't. <laughs> it was, it was rather, we were a festive bunch. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't even, can't even imagine. But anyway, that. we started the Chris, we did a Christmas album and we started Christmas shows and now everybody's doing it. Wow. Look Copycat. at that. What is different yeah. about a Christmas show to you than a, just a regular show? What do you do? You, you prep we do Christmas songs. Well, Patrick. I mean, of we course. do Christmas songs. God, this guy, who is this guy? <laughs> I he, mean, <laughs> he's a moron. He doesn't know what country, all the gold, broken lady. And then we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas songs, Patrick. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Duh. Oh my God. I can't even, I can't. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, are you, are you, I gotta go hit golf balls. Are you, you know, you getting more, more band members. Are you like, okay, we're going bigger, a batter. We're going to, I don't know, you know. Oh, well, at first we had a lot more production and when we were, and when we were at our theater in Myrtle beach, we had the choirs and we, and we'd get some choirs when we were on the road, some to join us there at the last sing some, you know, big pieces with us and big choral thing. Uh, the band was still pretty much the same and uh, more, of course, more decorations on the stage, Christmas decorations and stuff. But, oh, we really have enjoyed doing Christmas shows through the years. And I worked on it yesterday. I, I called a couple of, we do have three dates in December that we're doing. We hadn't done hardly anything. We've done three dates and the uh, July and August and nothing since March end of February. So I talked to him and I went and I was looking at my files and, and I uh, looking at some Christmas, listening to some Christmas tracks that we sing along with. I'm going, golly, that is, that is honest. I mean, it's like in about eight weeks, Christmas, eight or nine weeks. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. I mean, like, yeah, it's a great time of the year. We all love it. Everybody loves Christmas. If you don't, don't talk to me. Just get out of my face. <laughs> if, you, if you don't like Christmas, go get out of here. I went through uh, a phase. I went through a phase of a couple of years. I remember my 20s where I, did, where I didn't like Christmas. I was living in Pennsylvania. I was away from my family, alone. Well, you know, I was alone. It was like the first Christmas I spent alone. I'll never forget. Like, I hated it. I was just like, this yeah. is horrible. Yeah, I'll yeah. never do yeah, that again. Christmas by yourself is not. not it wasn't good, fun. So. I'll be honest. No, I, sh I shaved no. my head. Actually, I shaved my head. Uh, Christmas. He shaved morning. his head. That's Are what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Hey, let me check on my soup. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, you got my soup. Get it, Rudy. Get that soup. Campbell's. I'm curious oh, what kind of. I'm curious what kind of soup Rudy Gatlin uh, makes. Okay. Pro probably meat. I'm I'm, I'm getting just a meaty. Sent this. What, what kind of soup? Steve's wife. Like? What kind of well, soup? Well, uh, any like? kind of soup. Anything. Any kind of soup. We love I love this time of year because we get to eat out of a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> we love things you eat out of a bowl. And dog food. You know, we eat some dog food. We've eaten. What? You eat dog food? Oh yeah. We're road dogs. We've eaten out so many times. We might have eaten some dog food. Who knows? Just so it's hot, there's a lot of it. We um. don't care. Oh my God. But chicken soup, vegetable soup. This is some curry chicken soup that Cynthia, Steve's wife, made. 
Oh, wow. God, that smells good. Oh, yeah, yeah. And chicken, tortilla soup, any kind talking. of soup. Yes. Any kind of soup. I love soup. Holy cow, chicken curry soup. Dang, I, that's, I'm yeah. jealous. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's nice. Really I'm nice. So as soon as I finish with this, I'm going to have some soup. I love that. Here, I'm going to check on George real quick here. Let's see check what's on going George. on. Check on George. Come on, Right, George? It's like, George, come on here. We're going to give you're, him hell. You're, you're right? holding up the legend here. The myth. <laughs> the, what is it? The man, the myth, the legend. Or whatever. What's that saying? That's it. The, that's it. The man, is that the it? myth, the legend. The legend. Oh, I mean, he said it. I, what, I'm, what happened to my friggin' hair? He's behind me. How do you like my know. pictures in the background there? Yeah, I love them. Yeah, Are those the my, same... Uh, I think it is the same picture. I was sitting, I was sitting right here. We did the interview before, but that's. I remember the bird. I love, I love those Bob White quail. I love blue quail out in West Texas, but you know any kind of quail. I loved quail hunt. I'd rather quail hunt than eat. Do you like eating you know? the quail too? I mean, I know you hunt it, but oh, you absolutely, eat it, right? of course, absolutely. Good so. Lord, and dove birds love to eat those dove birds and quail, but uh, and quail no. seasons opens november 15th i think do you guys have any shows coming up rudy anything y'all are well, the, the ones in december december just that, that's it yeah oh, right we're now. doing the arlington music hall on december the 12th which is a saturday arlington music hall arlington in texas oh really arlington texas what and then we're in Houston at the Dosi Do in the Woodlands, Dosi Do on the 13th. And well, we're in Newberry, South Carolina on the December 3rd at a, op, the Opera House, beautiful theater oh, wow. over there. And that's, that's it. I mean, well, we but that's did, something. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, right. Yeah. Um, I just hope like heck we get this thing open back up. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm out here. You. you know, after the first, we're not doing much in January or February, but we'd, you know. Are those we typically started, busy months anyway, January or February? Sometimes they are. So, uh, January, sometimes they are. Sometimes, used to be, used to they were. We'd go to Reno, Tahoe, Vegas for two weeks, you know, during those January, February. Yeah. And do some dates on the road, but it, it, I'm looking at my schedule. It usually, you know, a lot of things, a lot of dates were just rescheduled to later next in, year. Yeah, later in 2021. Yeah. yeah I'm mean, just, just the same. A lot of them were just, let's just do it same time next year. Yeah. Oh, I see. So, Keep yeah. This, yep. Mm -hmm. So, are the shows uh, you guys playing in December, um, you know, in front of an audience, I mean, distance audience and, and sort of that. Yeah. So they're doing that a lot in Texas here. I mean, they aren't doing that here. I, I don't know what the latest is on. I know Newberry is. Cut oh, I got back. George here. So I'm going to let him in real quick. So he's. Hey, George. Hang on. Come hang on, on, George. Get here pick up the phone for crying out loud. <laughs> You're messing with my career here. Come on. <laughs> there we go, George. Hey, I'm a little I'm a little tardy, guys. George, hey Rudy, eleven eleven o'clock. What else you got to do, George? I mean, really, Man, come on. I know, right? You're I holding know. two legends up. <laughs> Me and Patrick, two legends in this business. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Where'd you I'm, go, George? I'm oh a little God. bit. I'm a little bit ashamed. Oh, God. hey, I like that. Hey, I like that hat. Now, wait a minute. Are you gonna work? Well, just just wait a minute. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, George. I'm, I'm, oh, man. I'm not trying to outdo you. So I'm not guys, trying to one-up you, guys, have you guys, but how about been, this? It oh. Looks like, it looks a lot like huh? mine, Rudy. Yeah, it yeah. does, actually. It looks it a lot really like It really is, mine. isn't it? Well, it's well, a... Uh, keep that sucker on there. It's a Western Hatters in Brownwood, Texas. It's a... Uh, what is it? Is it's it a, a uh, Is it a Stetson? Well, I'm trying to find the... Hey, should I be horizontal? It, should I be horizontal? It doesn't say. What, whatever's easier uh, for you, George. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Okay. I just know it's got W.W. W. Gatlin. Oh, well, aren't you, aren't you special? That's right? my dad's. <laughs> that's my dad's hat. I've got several it, more over there, but this one I'm kind of. That's your dad's hat? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It, well, it was his hat. Yeah. 
Well, it still is. And uh, George, you don't? Do you have a mask like this, George? Come on now. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Well, I don't. You're upstaging me, man. You're upstaging me. I, I'm the new. Uh, what'd you call it there, George? Uh, uh, Patrick. The new superhero. Super You're just a new superhero here. I'm. I'm the Texas bandito. bandito. The Texas. Te the Texas bandito. Yeah. Yes. You like that? Bandito. I like that. Oh I think God. that's it. I think that's I it. I love it. <laughs> so where are you, George? Uh, I'm in Nash, Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm How down about... here in Brentwood. Oh, Franklin. are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm out. I'm I'm out. You're you're where the you're where the hoity toity people live. I'm I'm out in West Oh, Nash, yeah. Or... oh, oh yeah. The hoity toities. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm I'm in I'm in uh, Forest Hills, Bellevue. Okay. West Nashville, the hood. Yeah. The hood. The hood. Yeah. How do you like your pro hey, uh, I gotta ask you, how do you like your property taxes going up by thirty percent? Well, not in the much. middle of, in the middle of a <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> That's in, horrible. Yeah. yeah, in the middle of a pandemic. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Man, I'm so yep. sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry I'm late, guys. No, please right. do, don't worry about. It. We, are you kidding me? Uh, Rudy's had me cracking up. Though I think I've just been laughing for fifteen minutes straight. That's well, all that's was, been happening. You guys didn't actually start without me, did you? Oh yeah. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> We're waiting on your ass. You're... Come on, <laughs> man. You didn't actually start wait. without me. <laughs> we ain't waiting on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of guitar you got back here? Uh, this one is a 69 D 28 right here. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, it's my first, like with the first royalties I ever made in the business, I went to straight to green, green guitar. And well, he's it. got some guitars down there, doesn't he? Oh yeah. I'm sure you do too. I'm sure you do too. Well, oh, you mean, yeah. You mean, you mean green guitars. Yeah, he does. George. Yeah. I hear, I haven't been down there, but George Gruen has three levels at the new store. You know, he used to be uh -huh. downtown. Now he's up there on what a, he's got the bottom floor, which is some really nice stuff. Then he's got the second floor, which gets a little pricey, you know, and then he's got the third floor of the real stupid stuff. Oh, I haven't been up <laughs> that know, high. Have you been up there? That, no, I haven't. I've just heard about it, and I've been threatening to go. I got to show what you. What you got this, there? This, this is my, I think, my last purchase. I thought I was done purchasing. Maybe That looks beautiful. That, this thing, that looks, wow. It's, it's crazy cool. Like, I've never even seen one, but it's a, a Gibson. Look look at the headstock, Rudy. It's crazy. Um, and it's got, like, of course, this fancy fretboard um, stuff. But it's a, it's a uh, Everly Brothers. But it's like... <sighs> It's like a collector's edition um, with, you know, got that, what do they call that? Eb not ebony. But, uh, that pearl? Pearl, yeah. Got like a pearl, pearl. inlay stuff? Yeah, and then it's got Is a pearl, that... pearl headstock too. How many did they make? Do you know? Um, it's a uh, special edition, like it's 25 of 30. You're kidding. Wow. That's what, they, that's what they're saying. Wow, that's um, unbelievable. Yeah. So it's a 93 and I totally took a flyer on it, but, uh, I think it's really cool, man. It's just like, I've never seen one. I've never seen one since then or before then. It's just so, so different. Does it make you want to do bye bye love? Yeah. <laughs> a little bye bye love for me there. Okay. All right. I don't know if I've ever played that song. <laughs> Put him in A. Bye bye, love. Bye bye, bye, -bye happiness. Hello. I'm singing harmony. Oh, I'm, I can't even hear that when I'm. Bye bye, up. love. Bye bye, love. Bye bye, love. Happiness. Bye -bye. Hello, loneliness. Yeah. I think I want to die. Bye, my love. Goodbye. Oh, I'm totally unrehearsed here on that song, but uh, <laughs> we failed. We failed. Anyway, <laughs> it's a pretty snappy sounding guitar, but uh, yeah. It looks amazing. 
Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, of course, that all that stuff on it. Well, we don't. What what makes it so different? Like, what what makes it so different from, like you said, um, you said it's unique and different. Like, what is it about it? Well, it's just the color combination. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, I've just not seen. I, they come in a lot of different, uh, um, a lot of different. You know. It looks like your guitar has a mustache. Yeah, right? well, it, looks, it looks like a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the all the one all, all the all the this model of Gibson they're all like that the 180 is all I mean they're all like that they all have a double a double pit guard is what it's called so it. um and and it is the the reason why we're bastardizing Everly Brothers right there is the Everly Brothers made this model famous yeah uh, but it was kind of a what what did they have Rudy it was more like a natural blonde or what was theirs. I don't know. The guitars? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're 180. I can't remember. I, I'd have to look at, I don't know, some old pictures. Uh, Google some and pull some old pictures up. I, I don't know. I just, yeah. so probably a black one like that. That's well, let me go, let me, let me go get, see, we're, see, we're talking about guitars. Let me go get one. Not the one up yet, but let me go. Go get one. Gonna, it's, let me, killing, it's killing me. Let me, me go get I a guitar. Okay. It's killing me that I can't remember what key Bye Bye Love is in. But anyway, yeah, go no, grab I'll it out. Go grab one. Uh, I'm going to look up uh, the Everly Brothers guitar here. What's that? You're looking it I up? Saw, yeah, I'm going to look up the guitar. Mm. Oh, you also want to mm. know the key, right? I can look that up. <laughs> Wait, why don't you just play it? Just play it for a second. Yeah, yeah, good call. Let's see if this works. I don't even know if this will work. See if you can hear this. Oh. That's <laughs> Yeah, it's here. Uh, let's see here. Maybe it's G? It's D. Is it? Bye bye. I know That's it. Let's see? see? It's weird. Isn't here, it? I, I'm going to play it right now. Can you hear that? Yeah. No. Nope. Huh? Hello, empty. Think I'm going to die. I think it's D. Okay, I can't play more than that. I didn't hear it. You didn't hear that? Uh-uh. Uh, play George, it again. Could you hear that? Hear it. No. Oh, you can't hear it? No, play it. Uh, oh, I thought y'all could. No. Turn that like shit play. up. I'm like playing it. Okay. Bye-bye, Emptiness. I think okay, I'm going go. to die. Probably D. All right, now I can. I so I'm they, learning, I, guys. I I'm learning how to share the audio here. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. I'll start it over. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye. Hey. All right. Hey. Okay, I can't play it. I think it'll get... Uh, Look at this. Cool. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Sure. Let me go. I'll do it from this end. The reveal. Oh, the I got reveal. This. <laughs> I got this last, oh, several months ago. It popped up on the internet and they were selling them. I said, I got to have one of these because I've never had one. Ready? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, Martin, what in the heck, Mark? What is that? What is What? Is it a? Is that a microphone? D20. It's a is microphone. A, yeah. Opry. BSM. Opry. Yeah. D twenty eight special edition. Here it comes. Get ready for it. Are you ready? Bah! Oh boy! Look at that! Wow! That's That's sweet fancy, or what? Fancy right there. You one up to me, my man. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to. T tell us the story. Well, they, yeah. they just popped up. It just popped up on the uh, in my email, and they I think they were selling them out of the Opry store. They're just selling them with this special. It's a, and George told me he had a, a hand in designing it. It's a D twenty eight. Yeah. All the all the belt, you know, and uh, George got the Grand Ole Opry got the Grand Ole Opry pick guard thing on it and the pearl inlaid, and at the top, it's got the microphone. I see that. That's the most amazing thing about it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to play it at the Opry. I'm going to take it and just play it at the Opry. 
hey, why don't we uh, why why don't we plan on doing the opera together? I think that should happen. I think we should do that. Well, we're doing it November sixth and November twenty seventh. Okay, I'll hop in with you. <laughs> I'll just give him a buzz. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I actually hadn't played there in about five years. It's probably time. Yeah. It's well, we did time. it earlier. We did it in July. It was happened to be the Saturday night that Charlie Daniels uh, service was Friday. And I went to that and uh, then they did a little tribute and showed his picture and, yeah. and uh, up on the back screen there. And I also took my other hat over there, the Charlie signed. So did you, and did, did you, did you also a, a Gibson Les Paul that he gave me years ago. Oh man. We put it on the stand, put the hat over it, and did a little tribute. You know, it was a neat, neat deal. That's really cool. We're losing a bunch uh, of good ones. Did, did we sure are, man. We sure are. Jerry Jeff Walker the other day. I grew up listening to Jerry Jeff in Texas. I mean And then Billy Joe Shaver Billy Billy Joe, yesterday. Yeah, and Billy Joe Shaver. It's crazy. Mac Davis a couple of weeks ago. Love him. I know. It's insane. I mean it's insane. Um uh, I'm, I'm, a rash of friends and family members. Helen Reddy, which you don't remember Helen Reddy. I don't, but um Well, she was had that she had the record I Am Woman Hear Me Roar. Big pop record. And and then she also had a big hit on I Believe in Music that Mac wrote. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I believe in music. I believe in you know. And we opened four years ago in like 77, 78 out in the Sahara, Sahara Tahoe. Oh wow! And, uh, but she was a big pop, big pop star back you know, years well, ago. So, uh, did you play that guitar on uh, the last time you did the Opry? No, I haven't had a chance to, and I was going to get Jimmy Caps to sign it for me. Also, oh okay, yeah. And he passed away. You know the uh -huh. great guitar player. Sure, yeah. yeah. Read his book. I just read his book, "The Man in Back." <laughs> get it. Yeah, sure. A great, a great. I talked him into writing the damn thing. Really? And yeah, I talk, he told me, he, you know, I knew he'd been here for 60 years and he told me stories. 60 years he's been playing on these sessions of all these great records. Wow. And I said, have you ever written a book? He said, no, nah, who'd want to hear that? Everybody. I bugging him. Uh, everybody. And finally, that's, <laughs> and finally that Scott England guy convinced him to write a book. And yeah, I've got it over. It's a picture of him and his guitar. And it's called the man and back. And was I was going to have him, I was going to have him sign it. Yeah. On the but, back. Yeah. But he and passed he, and away. He so. passed away too. It's been just a, yeah. a crazy, a uh, crazy year. I mean, uh, not in a good way. I mean, yeah. So you guys are, you guys are, you're there on the second, you said at the Opry. The, we're there on the uh, seventh. Oh, the seventh. seventh. Okay, I'll be in. Let me see. November, no, November 6th. Wait a minute. It's Friday, I think. Yeah. Well, and, I'll be. And November I'll be, 27th. Well, I'll be out of commission, but I'm going to hit, I'm going to have to hit you up for, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to get on there together one time. I, 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 I don't probably okay. do it as often as y'all, but I've been on a couple of times, but it's high time that I do it again. Um, okay. It, yeah, we've. Is We've the sound uh, is the sound special there? What what is so special? I mean, I know I know it's special to play there, but what makes well, it so? It's for, it's just an honor. It's the ultimate honor to be part of that, you know, brotherhood, sisterhood. That's how I. I mean, you you you, you can answer that question as well, of course. Uh, but for, yeah, it's just an honor. Yeah, I mean, and they honored us uh, many many years ago. I think we've been members now for 40, 44 years, something like that. Yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, every time you go on that stage, it's a thrill because you look at that circle. And I dare say any other concert venue on planet Earth has uh, seen the artists that have stepped in that circle and performed. Yeah, it's I mean, Carnegie Hall. Yeah, uh, you could see, put that I mean, in. you could put Caesar's that Palace there. before they turned it before they turned tore down Caesar's palace in Vegas. Yeah. Before it changed the, uh, I mean, they tore down the Caesar's palace. Not enough. Why? Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the palladium or the, uh, uh, Hollywood bowl, or, I mean, you know, what are some other 
in you know concert venue, you know the forums back a long time ago in San Francisco and <clears throat> and uh, New York and just great venues around the country. I dare say any or any of them have had the the uh, eclectic group. There's quite, and it's not just country. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. It's not at all just country. People think it is, but it's it's absolutely yeah. not. I mean, it's it, they've got all kinds of acts, genres on those, and the Ryman is real special. Yeah. Absolutely. Opry House is special. The Ryman is real special because it's the mother church, you know. Agreed. It's, it's yeah. It's a Pat, Patrick. It's the the original. It's the original. Yeah. It's the OG. It. It's the OG. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It 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 predates uh it predates the Opry stage where it is now. Wow. So which opened it, in seventy four. Right. Wow. So it's old. It's old. It's old hat to you, Rudy, uh, playing there. But uh, for me, I mean, I. I've bounced back and forth between being an artist and a writer and Nashville mm-hmm. did its damnedest to try to turn me into just a, you know, staff. I don't mean just, but uh, it's the lifeblood of our business, but a staff writer, you know, staff songwriter. Right. And I kind of let right. it while I had two kids. So kind of let a decade slip <laughs> away, but um, back, I'm back to making records and touring again and have been, have been for the last you know number of years. And so, but I consequently, finally got you know got back on the opera it's still i still feel like good a kid. Kid. it's old hat to you for me it's i still feel like a kid getting up there you know for well sure. that's awesome yeah that's i good. know you honor and respect it and that's that's good to hear it's good yeah, to hear absolutely. The, i think the some young people, guys are they don't i think some young folks don't really understand the 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 weight of it you know yeah but sure. you know you know, that's not, not necessarily, we don't understand a lot of the, the weight of a lot of things when we're 20, when we're 20, 22, you know, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Absolutely. Of course. There are a couple of things I'm wondering about. I'm 68. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I hear you. Man. I hear you. 68? What? No yeah. way. I don't believe it, Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. You'll look up and you'll, uh, uh, when I just, what, when I just 28 last week. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Oh yeah, I was just uh, and I was hell on wheels when I was twenty eight. Believe me. Oh, I can't even. I, imagine. I won't go into it. As much energy as you have right now, Rudy, I cannot even imagine you at twenty eight, just full blown at a hundred and fifty percent. Just going. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to see that. Well, <laughs> we were a we were a festive bunch. Why don't you die? <laughs> 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 I can't go into it. But. Uh, like for, li- for legal reasons, yeah, for legal reasons, I, I can't go so into it. And now, look, and now look at you. You're all, you're all, you're all refined in Brentwood, Tennessee. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I was uh, young and single and 28, singing on Johnny Carson, cutting hit records. Yeah, there you go, man. Did I mentioned I was single. Yes. What's it like to play uh, uh, at, the, at the Carson show? Well, you know, I did an interview recently. This guy in New York somewhere was doing a podcast on the Carson shows. So he was interviewing artists, actors, singers, you know, that had been on the Carson show for all those years. And my take was, and it always has been, it was and thinking back on it, it, unbelievable. Now you think about this. There was a time when there were three television networks, CBS, yeah. NBC, and ABC. Three. Yeah, that's right. Carson was the only entertainment show at 10.30 p.m. He was. There weren't. He was he this. Was the, <laughs> Only yeah, he was this one. He was it. <laughs> now, our buddy Pat Sajak, who was the weatherman here in Nashville at WSM, I don't know if you've heard this story. The Pat Sajak, yeah. he's on Wheel of Fortune. I know who Pat Sajak is. Yeah, that guy. Name, yeah. yeah, he went to LA and did the weather out there, and he's got the gift of gab. He's a you know. So next thing you know, he's got him a TV a show like that, but it went on at eleven. 11 p.m. And we had to get special permission and we wanted to from Carson. Now, Johnny, this is a good friend of ours from Nashville, Pat Sajak. He's got a little show and it's going up against yours, kind of. It's on at 11. Because, see, 
if you did others, if you, and then along the Joan Rivers kind of started having a show and cause she didn't get the hosting, did the host or something like that. So some other people started kind of feeling their way along and they, it was, it was like you do their shows and you don't do ours. Uh, and the reason you thought about not doing their shows is because there were 30 or 40 million people tuned in at 10 30 and about after his monologue and he might have a guest on at about 11 o'clock, the music act came on. You were the only music on TV. Yeah. Now you think about that. That's crazy. That is insane. There wasn't anything else on TV musically. So when you were singing your little song, <laughs> yeah. wow. Yeah. That's now we all the goal was a big hit record on radio, but Carson oh, yeah. put us on the map with all those other <clears throat> folks that although the country music craze was on, you know, the urban cowboy thing and the country music in the late 70s was on. It was oh, gangbusters. Yeah. But Carson put us on the map with a lot of folks that weren't listening to country music because that was the only show to listen to and, and watch. Crazy. So it was huge. I got a huge. I got to I got to inter- let me interject. That's a great story. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, I, I got to interject that that was exactly the time. The, you know, we we mentioned uh, Billy Joe Shaver and and Jerry Jeff Walker just passing on, and um, but but Rudy, that was exactly the time that I was just getting you know sinking my teeth in and picking up a guitar for the first time and getting a, my first Yamaha acoustic guitar and like listening listening to y'all and Willie and the Redheaded Stranger record and oh. the Urban Cowboy record. And I mean, you know, Johnny Lee and all Looking that. For, that's a great record. Looking oh. for love in all the wrong places. That's oh my a great God. Record. Yeah, absolutely. And it wasn't, you know, we started off talking about the Everleys with this Everly Brothers Gibson, but like, and figuring out what key Bye Bye Love was in. But like, man, it started with listening to you and Willie and, and the Urban Cowboy collection you know and all of that so those time the time you were just talking about was like speaks yeah. to me because literally i was listening and learning how to play a g chord like figuring that <laughs> i mean honestly like that, that it, is so it, awesome it, houston texas and it was k-i-k-k i'm sure you know the station and uh, and kilt fm those are the two were the two country stations and i'm sure you saw them both and probably they brought you in Many times, many times through the years, you know, but like was Kilt in Houston. Yeah, sure was. Yeah. Yeah. K-I-K-K was Lubbock. Yeah. K-K is Houston too. They had two. Oh, okay. K-L-K, K-L-B-K. K-L-B-K was Lubbock. I couldn't tell yeah. you, about it, but that um, sounds right. Yeah. yeah. K-L-B, Lubbock. K-L-B-K. Oh, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kilt radio. Oh yeah. Kilt FM. Yeah. And K-I-K-K. Yeah. And kicker. You you were a kicker. That was <laughs> if you listen to kick, you were a kicker. Anyway, right. so listening to you guys, man, just listening to you tell that story and listening to y'all growing up, like that, just really that was a, a sweet period for me. Like, well, figuring it all out down in Houston. Thank you for mentioning that. We were very blessed and still are very blessed, but we were, you know, to have a bunch of radio hit records, you know. Big time. Not all of them, of course, were as big as all the gold, but you know. God. Broken Lady and all the other ones were, you know, good, good radio hit records that when you hear them, people go, oh, yeah, I remember that. If you listen to country music at that time, you'll yeah, oh, yeah, I remember that. So well, we're blessed. We're blessed. Total classics, man. Absolute classics. I mean, yeah. Well, thank you. I'm Absolutely. curious about if uh, if if he ever came backstage to talk to the guest before the show or anything. Did he ever mingle backstage? Johnny? Yeah, Johnny. A little bit. A we went up bit. in his office one time and visited with him. Oh, really? And he would come out. He would come out just a little bit before the show started, and we'd we'd kind of be hanging backstage there, and he'd visit with us a little bit. We've got some pictures, and Ed McMahon would be back there, and yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then oh, he'd go God. do his thing. Oh my God! That but you know, so amazing. Every time we'd go to L.A., we would do the afternoon talk shows. Also, you know, there's Ellen. Uh, the generous yeah that's a big show and the what are some court? of the other daytime shows um, um the view I, I don't know what what time period are we talking about 
Well, just during the afternoon. Uh, like right you now? Mean that, you mean now? Yeah. On TV. What are the afternoon oh, talk gosh. shows? I have no idea. I don't watch it. See, just, everything's so fragmented now. You don't even know. I mean, yeah, there's, well, there's, a, there's so a, many. There's a million TV channels now. It went from three to a million. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we used to do those afternoon shows. It was the Merv Griffin show. Oh, Merv yeah. Griffin. Yeah. Merv Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. Mike remember. Douglas. Mike Douglas was in Philadelphia, but then he came out to LA. I'm not familiar uh, with him, but Merv Griffin had those sideburns, right? Yeah. That's, I remember Merv Griffin, but I don't know Mike Douglas. Well, he, he was another talk, great talk show host, kind of a singer in his early years. And uh, 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 Jim Neighbors, who was, you know, Gomer. Yeah, on, he uh, had a show? Gomer, he, had a, he had a show for a while. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Oh, Di Dinah Shore. Yeah. I don't know Dinah Shore. She I was an actress. The name. I remember Dinah the name. Shore. But see, these were the forerunners of Ellen's show. Oh, and all these crazy. daytime. Oh, yeah. And you did them because there were little old ladies there sitting there ironing <laughs> <laughs> and smoking. You know, is that what drinking you drinking coffee? Is that what oh, said, yeah. He said smoking. He said <laughs> they're sitting there ironing, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, and going, I like him, Gatlin. Wait, boy. how many hands do they have? They're smoking, well, drinking ironing, coffee, I'm ironing. ironing. They're just like, oh, yeah. Just well, they got it going. All. And it kicking is, the baby over. Hush, yeah. be quiet. <laughs> kicking the baby. <laughs> yeah. Hush. And they're and they're going, I'm gonna go buy that record. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello. That is crazy. That is they, so oh, crazy. That's great. Women yeah, watch those shows. Hey Rudy, by the way, that's the time when actually people did actually buy records. Yes. How about that? And there was a scuttlebutt that the scuttlebutt was that at one time women bought about 70% of the records. Oh really? I have no that doubt. Was, oh, I have no doubt. Oh, oh, that's interesting. That's why we did it. That's why well, we did them. Well, you know, I mean, you can look at, um, of course, no, no records don't sell anymore much at all. But except sad, sad. May, maybe at a show, you sell a CD just as a coaster yeah. to get some, to, yeah. you know, <laughs> as, as, as somebody, you know, somebody they want they want you to sign it or whatever. So, but like yeah. you look at look at merch sale, like T-shirt sales. I mean it's all women buying it it's not dudes don't guys don't buy that stuff for the most part yeah so. uh i hate to i hate to see it i uh, i know change is uh a good thing or if it if it's inevitable inevitable but boy i tell you when you've when you take away my ability first of all if you had a record deal <laughs> Wow, that was huge. Yeah. Not everybody used to have a record deal because there were six record companies in this town. Yeah. And there were probably a handful of artists on those labels. Do you know how many new artists they would sign a year to those to a label? Couple, maybe. Two or three. Yeah. Oh, really? That's it? Oh, oh yeah. And they would put their what? money in it <laughs> and record you, pay for the record, and then they had to, you had to pay them back through recoupables. Recoupables is the first money comes back in, goes to pay for the expenses and the, making the record, so forth. And then after a certain number, <clears throat> you started participating based on your royalty rate agreement in the contract. But there was a time, oh, yeah, to have a deal was, whoo, man, we've got a record deal. Yeah. And I tell, I tell people, man, what a great time to, you know, you can go to Nashville and get a record deal, get a publicist, get a booking agent, get a marketing company, man. Yeah. Guess what? So can everybody else. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's hard. Radio used to be the, uh, gatekeeper and the A&R people, the record company used to be the gatekeeper. And if you were good, you got in. If you were good, you got played on the radio. If you weren't, you didn't. And they were for sale. You buy this stuff. You have now taken away my ability and your ability, George, as an artist to make a product for sale. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I didn't, uh... they don't, now, you buy cars, you buy home. Now you can lease a car and you can lease. But, but basically 
we go to the store, we, we buy stuff, you know, it, it makes yeah. no and, sense because that's what y'all do. It's like, it's like if they split up movies, it's like a director, if they released a movie and you bought scenes instead of watching the whole movie. Right. It's, it's well, like you get it right. Like, I mean, that's the whole point. An artist created an yeah. album. It was a story. It's, hap- you were, it's happened right? to movies too, but it's happened to movies too. You can lease movies too. You just rent them. You don't have that's to buy true. them. That and you're renting now, and, and they rent movies. I mean, you know, and they granted, rent, and they, I'm sorry. And they rent music, Rudy. That's what they're doing. They rent, they rent music now. So a streaming service, like you pay, pay $10 and, and they get access to the entire catalog of music almost ever made. All and they know. think they think they've got the algorithm figured out. Yeah. And I'm going, well, I'm hearing some horror stories about millions of plays on the live streaming, this, that, and the other. And it reverting, it means one sale. So many plays means a record sale and all this. It used to be a real simple model and now it's not. And I, uh, Hey, the download was fine. And for them to do away with the download, see, see, Steve Jobs is spinning in his grave. Because when he came along and said, we're going to charge a buck for the download. And the artist is going to get 70 cents. And we're going to take 30. Great. It's the same deal. Download it. The mechanicals go to the record company. Yeah. Yeah. Apple pays the record company and they pay the artist based on their royalty agreement. That's fine. I don't mind that. And now they've gone away. They've gone and done away with that. Did you know that? Of course you knew that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're downloads, getting rid of iTunes. Is paying gone. for downloads are, is going away. Yeah. Is it worth even making albums anymore, or is it better just to do singles and things like that? Yeah, people just, well, people just do singles. I mean, honestly, they might... I mean, I still, I still think of it in terms of an album. I'm sure, I'm sure Rudy, you do too, but like, yeah. that's what they do. They release singles more for EPs. Yeah. Or EPs, four songs, six songs, four or five, five songs. songs. Yeah. Wow. So that's the, the, the listening to an album top to bottom, which is used to be a great joy of yours, Rudy and of mine, um, urban cowboy. We talked about that earlier or whatever your records and, that's not how people listen anymore. Now they listen to playlists or they listen to just random one-off songs, you know, and that they don't even own. They just, they're renting it for $10 a month. You know, like I said, they're, they're leasing it. They get access to the whole music catalog of ever created uh, any song they want. They just search for it. And uh, now if they stop paying that $10 a month, they don't have access to any of it anymore and they don't own it. They can, they can add it to their library, but they don't really own it. So only yeah. as long as they keep renting the service. What, yeah. what could the streaming sites do to improve this, to make it better for the artists? What, what, what is it just increasing the per play they, um, they don't, price? They, they, don't, they don't care. Honestly, they don't care. Yeah. Just a number, right? Mixed in with all the other. What they could do is, is, is you know, agree to pay more for uh, streaming. Um, yeah. Per stream, just pay per more. Per streaming. Per yeah. Stream. But, but that's not going to happen. They fight that in Washington every step of the way. The lawyers fight that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's sad. Are you finding, uh, George, that you're you're giving your music away pretty much for free, so then they will buy a ticket to come hear you in person? Absolutely. So you got to keep it's making, a one eighty. Yeah, you got to keep is, making music. Yeah. You got to keep making music just so that you're still have something to talk about still relevant for buyers to buy, to, to bring you in to play a show. And then you can hopefully sell some t-shirts. Wow. That's it. That's it. Well, it mean, used to be a one. It, it used to be that you, I know what you're going to say. Went out and toured because you toured and you made a little bit of money, but you toured and did the radio in, you did, uh, in stores and you right. did the, go by the radio station and people saw you at the concert. They go, Let's go to Sam Goody's tomorrow and buy that record. Absolutely. And that's what they did. That was the model. Right. Go sing it for them and perform it. And here's our latest single. You can go buy it tomorrow. You can go All buy the gold it. in California. Buy yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. At uh, any number. Sam Goody's uh, uh, where, uh, Warehouse. What was the name of that place? Uh, tower, tower Warehouse. Tower, oh, tower, tower Records. records. Yeah, tower. How, about, you know, how about Cactus? You remember Cactus? That's a tiny one in Texas. Cactus. Uh, oh, it's or in Texas. it was. 
I just if you don't remember it, no big deal. But Cactus Records, Sound there. Warehouse, Sound Warehouse. Yeah, that, I remember yeah. the guy that owned that back in. Yeah, Sound. Remember they used to buy and sell, then they started renting. The uh, you know, I think they're out of business now. But anyway, oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, go buy this record. Vir Virgin Records. I used to go to Virgin Records in high school and buy all my CDs. Yep. Yeah, that, that was, was a good. big one. Yeah, that yeah. was big more on the on the East Coast where you're from, right? Um, no, I mean, in, it was in Grapevine, actually, uh, where, oh, where, okay. I went to, where I went to high school. They had a Virgin really? at the Grapevine Mills Mall. No it, kidding. It was a um, like an outlet mall. I know where that mall is. Yeah, yeah. that mall. Uh, so, yeah, they had a big Virgin. Re it was massive. Uh, the airport. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right by the airport. And I would go there. That's where we hang out in high school. They built it when I was in high school. We go buy all our CDs there. It was awesome. You could listen to them. You know, that it's back when you would go in and put on the headphones and, you know, listen to albums and then buy them and you're talking to your friends and you'd hang out there for hours. Yeah, it was, a social, it was a social experience. And that's the way music is supposed to be. Uh, you know, it's it was meant to be a, a social experience medium you know i mean that's that yeah. was cool to walk into the store and listen with your yeah. friends or talk, see you know strike up a conversation with somebody you didn't know and what they were listening to and you yeah know. exactly yep yeah. i'm gonna date myself i can remember this is really gonna you know you said something while ago that triggered this thought we used to listen to albums and we'd get together <clears throat> maybe at somebody's house and listen to the latest album of you know I remember that's cool. My senior year in high school, 1969, 1970, when the Beatles White album came out. Oh wow. Wow. Somebody wow. purchased a copy and we all went over to their house. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and had a listening party. That's white you, album. Do you, you remember what was your first thought when you heard that album? Do you remember your first thoughts of hearing that? I'd, I'd have I, all I remember is that we all got together and there it was. She had a copy of it. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Wow. Yeah. And you look and you can go through and you can go through all the the the, the album art, you know, yes. the line notes yep. and all that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. And I, and I think that a lot of I hope, I hope that a lot of people did that with our records. Cause see, we didn't make albums. We tried to, we put everything into each song and sure they all weren't radio hit records. They were, I don't, and I, I don't want to say they were album cuts, but they, we knew they weren't going to be singles. Okay. That's fine. But they were still damn good songs, good playing, really good playing, real good singing. And they, we put everything we had into, and they will stand the test of time. Yeah. I believe. Right. Uh, to where you listen to them, then you go, oh, that's, that's, that's still pretty good. Yeah. Still real good, you know. Yeah. Sing us something there on your guitar. Well, come on. <laughs> get, get, no, sing. You sing. You sing. Hey, how about Bye Bye Love? Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye Love. My holiness. Now I can hear you. Hello, Hello holiness. Thank God I'm going to die. Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye Love. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. There goes, there my, goes baby. my baby with someone Some new. new. She sure looks happy. I sure am blue. It's weird. There's a delay. It's a delay. Yeah. Totally. It's like, here's the reason that I'm so free. My loving baby done peed on me. No, I didn't like <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a there's yeah. another version to that verse too. yeah there's another there's that another was, version <laughs> well i think i think patrick patrick can edit it so go ahead and tell us go ahead and tell there us. goes my baby with someone new she sure looks happy she must have learned to screw <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry that ain't right Oh, come on. That's the best part when you're jamming with the band and everyone starts singing, you know. Those We're, and we get a little blue. Yeah. yeah. The lyrics. <laughs> Absolutely. I, that's so funny. Oh my Rudy, God. we got it. We got it. Rudy, why, why is it that why? We, have not, we have not had these, uh, shared these laughs? Uh, we live 10 minutes from each other, and yet we, we haven't shared these laughs until we get on a, a live stream out of Austin, Texas. All right. That's, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> I think it ain't I right. Think, it just 
It ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't, right. It ain't, it ain't right. Look, I love it. Look, like you Johnny Cash. When, when you were singing, when you were singing harmony, it, there's a delay. Yeah. Yeah. It it's, was. It's kind of like when when Johnny Cash was doing that song. I ain't going back on Brokeback Mountain. I ain't going back. That shit ain't right. That shit ain't right. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't going back on Brokeback Mountain. Mm. Yeah, that shit ain't right. That shit ain't right. Yeah, it just ain't right now. Oh, my I God. Did. I never did see that. I Are you never... still on the air there, Patrick? I'm crying here. I'm still crying. Um, oh. oh, my God. Are we getting paid for this? <laughs> no. No, just like – no, Rudy, Rudy, it's just like your records. You don't get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the spot of, I'm like the Spotify of podcasting. Yeah, so that's what I yeah. do. I just <laughs> no. Hope nope, somebody no, can see us at our live show now. We don't get paid for any podcast stuff. Podcasts <laughs> do not pay. But you know what? Maybe you can tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got three dates in December, and that's it. I got about seven in in the spring, and that's it. I mean, I, don't, <laughs> oh, I got I got nothing going on until next year. So, wow. but yeah, well, such is 2020. Yep. Such yeah. is 2020. Yeah. What are absolutely. things like in Austin? What are things like in Austin these days? I mean, people are playing, you know, as far as music goes, I mean, I know there's places uh, that are offering shows and bands are just finally starting to get out and do some socially distant stuff. But at the same time, there's also a lot of music venues closing. Uh, and to be honest oh. with you, there's a couple that aren't haven't even hit the news yet. I just got I know people, right, just like you guys. And I've I've already got the word on the street that there's a, a couple more places uh, closing that will surprise the absolute hell out of you guys. So, yeah, it's it's weird. It's a weird it's a weird thing because it's like, you know, people are starting to get out and play and do some stuff and try. But at the same time, places are closing. So it just right. It's this weird thing happening. You guys think well, that's happening. Gonna- do you guys think it's all going to go just magically go away after November fourth? No, no. Uh, no, of course. I mean, right, I don't mean right, I don't yeah. mean really go away like the virus. Yeah. I mean, I mean all the the news. No, of course not. There's going to be some new and different news, and I don't go into it, but it's going to be it's going to get crazy. It could get real ugly. I hope it doesn't. I hope I me hope too. like heck. Yeah, me too. Me too. But yeah. when. Um, and I don't mean I don't mean to be an alarmist, but the news yesterday was in some cities they're boarding up the stores windows. Look, I I I, I might do the same if I let's say I have my food truck still here in Austin and I and I was on Rainy Street, which is a very popular street, a lot of people, you know, that I I could potentially see doing something like that just as a precautionary measure against yeah. yourself. You know, you don't know what to expect and but at the same time then that the visual of that puts fear right and then it just starts to spread and becomes contagious so you start to do what you know where where do you go what steps do you take so is I mean, that advice is that it is that they're is doing that the scenario, national guard rudy rudy is that if uh, you're saying if if trump wins or if biden wins i think either in my opinion i've said that too either maybe more so i think yeah, i've said either way they're going to be they're going to be uh, pissed if Trump wins and if Biden wins, they're going to be, yay, let's take over. It's our turn. It's our time. He didn't say anything about all this stuff this past six months. He must be for it. No. I, what about, what about the far right? If Biden wins, are they going to go stupid, get stupid? We will go to bed and get up and go to work the next morning. Now, I mean, yeah, the, just I like mean, we, I, I, Just like I, we did when Obama. I know we will. I know we will. I, no. But like, uh, no. I mean, there's a far right as much as there is a far left, and they're both crazy. You know. Oh, the far, far radical the, right. The radical yeah. right. They, yeah. They might do some stuff, but That's the majority I'm, of us will go. Of course. Well, darn. Of course. Of course. Yeah, go to bed. Of, get yeah, up. Go to work. And absolutely. You know, I'm talking make about, the best of it. I'm talking about the radicals of both sides. 
you yeah. Know, they might they might get crazy. Yeah. Well, Good I point. mean, they, they've been Good told point. to go to the poll locations, right? Haven't they been told to go and watch the polls and and that not, sort of thing? Not. That's just asking yeah. for trouble. I mean, Trump That's said just, that, right? He said that several times. Go to the polls. We need you guys watching to make sure there's no fishing it it's like what oh my god that's not good i mean again it's, they're sending out the national guard here in texas to all the poll location governor abbott already declared that so on to make on, sure on, that there's on no, election day they're gonna have yeah. national guard at all i mean it's gonna look straight out of a movie right it's gonna look straight out of some crazy movie it's it's yeah. insane it's but at the same time yeah like a futuristic thing right like but at the same time um you know it's kind of like maybe we need it Maybe it's OK just for that day, just to make sure stuff doesn't get out of hand. I don't know. I, I, I have more faith in Texans. You know, I have a lot more faith in us as Texans to to do the right thing, to be honest with you. I hope so. hope you're right. Um, I will say, Austin, Austin, I love the way they brought out the they brought out the, the cavalry uh, when that when that stuff was starting up in Austin. They brought up the the police on, on horseback on horses. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that shit, I mean, that they were not, you, you can't argue with a horse. No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that thing, no. they're, they're kind of like women. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, and you, then, you know, get very far. you know, what's yeah. awesome. What's awesome is, is the left. It's so uncool to, to be cruel to an animal. Right. So they literally couldn't do anything about the fact that those horses were forcing them off the streets. You know, they couldn't. Yeah. What are you going to do? Hit the horse? Kick the horse? I mean, well, you better not. You better not. You better, yeah, hey. you better not. You better not. So it was perfect. Don't, don't it, touch my horse. It was perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah so you're I mean, right. It was perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. They're, well, and they're also, out all the time. The, the horse police like they're they they're always out. They're on rainy and yeah. 6th Street like it's normal, just normal. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. But I they know. brought out more. Yeah, they just brought out a cavalry like, you know, it was great. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I agree. I it agree. was really great. So, yeah, I think they should bring up. A, they should bring up the police on horseback for, on election, election. day. Yeah, yeah, they might. Sure. You're right. They, they might actually um, that might be part of it. It's Who very, knows? It's very, plus, it's very imposing. I mean. What is some jackwad going to do? You're going to, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to be cruel to the, to the animal? No. Uh, you, are you going to try to beat it physically? No, you, you're not going to win that. I mean, you better just back the fuck off. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not the man in the police. The looters, gonna put up with a you know what? Crap. Screw That's the right. freaking looters. I mean, and God. see, I, I, agree. I think that's I what's going to happen. I think I think it's the beginning of the end of that stuff on election night. We, you know, whether or not regardless the cities or the states, I don't know what the law and exactly what the president can do. But see, there you're protecting other Americans in that area, yeah. right? See. You can call out the National Guard if there's a and there's a stipulation. There's a stipulation, several probably, but you can call them out when you have anarchy or the possibility of that. Or I, I read it a couple of months ago. When do they declare martial law? Yeah. And when do they call out the big guns? Because there are other folks around there, a law abiding citizens that are going to get in the crossfires and they you got to you got to protect them. So hundred uh, percent, they're just trying to run their businesses, right? They're just trying to live their life, live their yeah. life or just going about doing another errand, right? Like not even involved in, in whatever's happening. Uh, maybe they already voted, right? Or what, whatever that day is going to be, right? I already voted. I, of, I voted early. I got it out of the way. I didn't want anything oh, I voted to do a couple with. times already. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I went and got in the back of the line. They hadn't caught me yet. I'm going to go back to, and do, vote some more. <laughs> <laughs> that would be if a great I could, skit i love that rudy i would be such a great skit I love <laughs> if i could if oh i could oh my god that would be hysterical I'm, you come back with like a a, a groucho a, a wig on. mustache yeah he's like, got a mustache he, on yeah he comes back. god we should do if this. i could i'd go to the back of the land that's what I'm saying. You go to the back of the line, you show up again with a, a, di a disguise on and like, you know, and go, and go to the back of the line again and vote again. If I could, I, I would that. do it from, I voted a, what a week or so ago. 
I'd still be doing it if I could, but I can't. <laughs> so I only get my one vote. I got to go get my dad and vote. I got to go get my 93 year old Marine Corps daddy and take him to the poll today because wow. the uh, ballot, the ballot, I'm going to go check the mail. If his mail in ballot didn't show up today, we need to go vote in person because today's the last day of early voting. Where in Tennessee? Tennessee. Where, oh, in yeah. Tennessee. Rudy, wh where is where is your daddy? He's close by. I'm gonna go. He's he's here with us in okay. Franklin, Tennessee. Oh. So I'm gonna go get him and and probably take him to this polling place that I saw the other day that didn't have any land. There wasn't a land, so I said, "Hey, let's go back there." And if I have to, I'll wheel him in. And have let they him had? Vote. Have they had where he's staying? Have they had any any problem with COVID? Uh, no, he's in a place, not a, not a, uh, he was in a home. He and mom were in a, play, a facility, but he's got his own place now. Oh, and, wow. Uh, which That's is, awesome. you know, we got several, got several ladies looking in on him throughout the day. And then I check on him quite a bit and the brothers check on him. So he's well taken care of. We That's lost so mom nice. three years ago, but he's in good shape, pretty good shape, but uh, he's just, um, he's, he's tough. I, he's 93 and man, I'm glad I to won't hear. see 93. Yeah, I, I, I kind of don't want to. I'm not that tough. Man, I mean. I mean, you think about it. God. He's, he has seen a lot. Oh. 93, right? Like, Jay. he has seen a lot. The stories he would tell would be unbelievable. Yeah, we do. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool that he lives so close and you're able to see him. Yeah. yeah. My, dad, my dad's down in Houston. I hadn't seen him all year. Um, he's not 93, but. Uh, obviously, but I mean, he, I just, man, I can't, I don't even know, you know, he's kind of locked, locked up, locked in his house. Yeah. And, I mean, it's hard to get down there and I don't know quite how to go about doing that. I mean, I guess I could just hop in the truck and drive down 14 hours nonstop. I don't well, know. Well, you know, Southwest is flying. I've been on a couple of Southwest flights. Yeah. He doesn't want me to do that though. I think he's a little worried. I think he's uh -huh. a little yeah. He's worried about you going down to see him. I don't know if he's worried about me catching something or him. I can't tell. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like yeah. I tell everybody, I've had three COVID tests now, and they've all come back negative for COVID, but positive for everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Did you I get got everything? You got everything else. They're like, <laughs> I love this. Who am I? Hey, uh, Patrick, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> I've got everything. Rudy, this is me. Why? This is me doing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> my favorite that, part. That's a, that's a little bit of a, uh, I that, love that, it. That deal I do is a little bit of Sam Kennison. Is that Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Love Sam Kennison. And Dennis Wolfberg. That I don't know who that is. Go I don't either. I you, don't either. I'm glad you said that. that. I'm glad you said that. I was going <laughs> to go, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> write, write this down. Okay. Write this down. Okay. <laughs> Dennis Wolfberg. What, 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 go YouTube. Dennis Wolfberg. Dennis. Rigid sigmoidoscopy. Whoa. How is he what? That? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Rigid, Rigid sigmoidoscopy. That's no way I'm spelling that. That's, that's not happening. I don't you know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea. Come on, Patrick. You were a private it's, school educated yeah. East Coast guy. What? See, Pu public Patrick. school all the way here, baby. <laughs> now, when you do a colonoscopy, it's a flexible hose, right? It used to not be flexible. Oh. Thus, oh it was my called a rigid. God. Oh my God is right. That sounds absolutely horrific. Well, yeah. A rigid sigmoidoscopy. Well, you go, you go YouTube Dennis Wolfberg and watch that bit. <laughs> Wait, so I'm, then, I'm, you're having me Google colonoscopies. Is uh, that what? <laughs> yes. Hey, you'll get there about every five years when you get older. <laughs> oh no i i absolutely i've already uh yeah. taken a, a test it's horrific uh <clears throat> now that last time should i be concerned i woke up and the doctor was over there 
the lights were down. He was smoking a cigarette, listening to a Johnny Mathis record. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, and, and oh then, my God. <laughs> and then go look at Sam Kennison, his bit about Ethiopia. Okay. Back when they were doing, uh, uh, where they were doing benefits for the starving people from Ethiopia. Go look at the Sam Kennison bit on yeah, that. That I will definitely look up. Yeah. Be, uh, so my, so when I look Carlin, at the camera, that, do that, that was my favorite back then. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I so get, you, I get, you do a Sam Kennison. That, that's your. It, it, well, that that deal when I say I've got everything else. Yeah, that's, 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 a, Ken, that's a Sam Kennison. Kennison right? totally. yeah. Dennis Wolfberg. Dennis Wolfberg was very. He was very animated with his face. He had a great, great, great comedian. Very funny guy. And that's where I get inspiration for that delivery. Hey, what we do, I could sit here and go, well, then we got, then my, here's my next record. And then we did this. And then we went, no, no. That doesn't get it, that doesn't get, that doesn't get it done. We're, we're very <laughs> animated. because, And people look at me like, and I go, hey, they pay me pretty good to do stuff like this, you know, act up, cut up, do songs. And very, we're, we're, we can't help but be entertaining. George, you, you know, you're, you, you might have some records, you have your music and that's great. But when you also part of the show is you being personable, yeah. funny, clever, right. entertaining, right. To go with those, with the music. You know? I think, I think that's what I've been missing. Like I need to do, I need to do more of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gonna be my new show intro. That's how I'm gonna start intro well, the show. Just now I'm gonna now I'm gonna be I'm gonna have all the success that Rudy has had. But yeah, I just need to add this. <laughs> well, let me tell you, let me tell you something. I don't do it. You know, we, Steve and I don't, we're, we're kind of the color commentators on uh, stage. Larry, Larry, I love it. I love it. I just want to say. He I carries want, the brunt just, of the, Larry covers. I love it. I love it. Well, th I do this more when I do my one man play. You got a one man play? <laughs> <laughs> it's Rudy Gatlin, dot, 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 the brother on the right. <laughs> I thought you were going to so, say the man in the back. Oh my God. No. The one of the brother on the right. Cause yeah, when you're no, looking at us on I stage, know. that's me over there. Yeah. Yeah. And I do, I've done this for years, but I haven't done it as much as the course. Uh, and we've all Steve and Larry and I've all done individual things, but this is something I'm going to do. And I'm going to develop this thing more and more, but I am more animated and more because I can't help it. I just can't help it. It's just <laughs> part of the deal. You get on stage and something takes over and you just, I just got to be me. <laughs> I got to yeah. be me. I got to be me. <laughs> microphone. Yes. I can't help it. I can't, I can't help it. So, George, uh, this was the first 15 minutes of the podcast you missed. I mean, it was just like there was just Rudy just going in and out and, and creating masks and all, you know. I'm so costumes. disappointed in myself. I'm so disappointed. Hey, this, is my new, this is my new look. So let me tell you what happened. What my my, my dog my earpiece in there. I keep dropping this damn thing. Rudy, let me tell you what happened real quick. My boy, I was late. My dog <laughs> was trying to get out there. <laughs> Spider Man. Where'd they Texas. go? Which way'd they go? Texas Spider Man. That's Texas funny. Spider Man. Texas like Spider Man. <laughs> so my dog my dog knocked over my coffee. I'm trying to get out the back door this morning. Oh right before. God. And I wasn't even I mean, I was still in my pajamas and whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I mean this coffee went everywhere. And, and it was just, a, it couldn't have been a bigger disaster. Got on a chair that has cowhide on it. Like it was just a train wreck. It just set me back. So I'm sorry I was late, guys. Oh, gosh, please. No, no worry. Now we got that great story. Now, yeah. Well, he, know. He, he was sorry too. He, he sends his apologies. <laughs> did he, did he? <laughs> Look, my, do my dogs have interrupted the podcast. Uh, Many a times, uh, so it happens. He's a little. I think he's a little ashamed. He doesn't want to come down here now. He <laughs> <laughs> he, you see him walk down with a new cup of coffee for you, like here you yeah. go. <laughs> 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 Refill, Dad. 
I got I was you. Show that would be you. awesome. That would that be, would be awesome. Show you a picture that, that would be of awesome. My, <laughs> the thing Here's is, they grand, would do it. They would do it if they could. I, Here's 100%, my grandson. 100%. Yeah. I'm a grand Paul. Yeah. You ready for my grandson, my grand Paul? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, oh man! Oh, 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 man. Wow! Isn't he a beauty? That so is... I got him from my daughter. It's an English golden. Looks about oh, three or four man. months. How, yeah, that was a couple of couple of weeks ago. He's thirteen or fourteen weeks now. Yeah, that's about right. Man. That, size. Uh, that size is my favorite when they're that size and they're going to get bigger, but they're right. They're just yeah. in that medium. They don't know so what to cute. do with the body. Yeah, it's so cute. It, oh man! Here's a great shot of me in the backyard. He's over taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got it always taking a lead <laughs> that's he's what like, they do he's like he's like looking back like dad can i get some privacy day yeah like, like a live stream in my poop session over here <laughs> <laughs> and then i got it oh from my, my daughter Oh, oh man, that. that's and awesome! Her, I got that. I got him for her birthday in July, and when things were kind of well, she, she was just she was needing a puppy. Yeah. You know? yeah, she was really needing a puppy, really bad. And then her boyfriend moved from South Carolina to Waco to start Baylor, a, a graduate school on a medical. He's a trainer, sports trainer, so he's got a job and he's going to graduate school. He's ninety miles away. She's got a new puppy. All is well with the world. It's okay. Nice. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Everything. And she's got a good job and just, you know, but there before all that, he w wasn't sure if he's going to be able to, they, they, you know, the summer, a lot of things were on hold. Yeah. Oh, Finally, yeah. They made the decision to come on. So it's like, thank you, Lord. Yeah. And, and where, where is she? In Dallas. Oh, okay. That Kids was a, are in Dallas. That was a great call on your part to get her a puppy at that time. Oh, man. Yeah. She was just, just, yeah. de just, oh, bless her heart. And, yeah, definitely, and, de and definitely good that you got her one that's going to shed like crazy. That's a good Well, thing we, I'm, yeah. joking. I'm joking. Yeah. It'll keep that's her busy. Okay. It'll keep her we busy. Had, uh, yeah. We had these two, but look at this little guy. I mean, I had to buy a Roomba because my dog shed so much. Oh, I my God. I bought, a, I bought a Roomba and it doesn't even pick up half the stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm yeah, not thrilled with it. It's, it's hit or miss. Uh, I agree. It's hit or miss. But it does pick up all the majority of the dog hair in kind of the main around, yeah, like the, the main areas. You yeah, know, it every kind of makes day. it look halfway decent in a pinch. Yeah. I, yeah. But I still have to do a weekly more. Oh, yeah. Hair. Yeah, totally. Man. Totally. If you're OCD. Yeah. I mean, I do the Roomba well, every day or twice a day just because I it, it, my dog just sheds. I mean, yeah. just look at these, him the wrong way. His hair falls off. These, but the, the English goat, they shed. We they had shed, a couple yeah. of them. That's why I have labradoodles, guys. That's why I have labradoodles. Yeah. They're great. <laughs> no, yeah, short hair. Now, well, let me. No, they got long, long hair, but they don't oh, shed. Oh, they do? Oh, they don't they do shed. Not shed. They do oh, not shed. Let me ask what a, what you, a let me ask you about that. Let me ask you about that, George. Okay. A Labrador and a poodle. Yeah. Super smart. Super smart and loyal, uh, loving. But 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 back up, back up, back up, George. <laughs> oh, you know where I'm going. On. You just don't know. You just don't know. Hey, there there's is. a beautiful Labrador. There's a poodle. Why don't we? What? I'm telling you, man. I didn't. I wasn't a believer either. I wasn't a believer either. And my fiance convinced me. We got a brother and a sister, and they're. I mean, they're just amazing. And I was a golden guy. I had two, I had, I've had two goldens in my life oh. yeah. and these dogs are every bit like, I mean, very really? similar in terms of like, they're even more loving if that could be possible. Uh, wow. I, it's crazy, man. And, and they're so smart. I mean, they're like people. They just are your family. They're your, they're your, yes. they're your tribe, yes. man. I mean, these, yes. I didn't expect it. I, I didn't expect it. I was, I wasn't a poodle fan. I'm telling you, Rudy, I, I wasn't, but man mixed with labs, golly. And one's like 50 pounds. And, and then the, the, the girl is, Oh, the wow. She was the runt yes. and That's she's good. only like 25 or 24 pounds. So, wow. I mean, but their personalities that this dog is this breed yeah. is, is something yeah. else. I wasn't a fan either. I was skeptical like you. Yeah. 
So oh, I um, never, I don't even know what breeds my dogs are. I don't even care about that. I just love dogs. I don't even care. Come up here. The uglier, the better. In fact, I'm like, get over here, you little ugly bastard. Get over here. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I was, yeah. I was trying, I was trying to get her to agree to just picking up one or two of them at the shelter at the time yeah. that we got these dogs. These yeah. dogs are three years old. One more picture and I'll quit. Oh, <laughs> that that is look at that face. <laughs> oh not, that's like amazing. on her shoulder. Yeah, that's anyway. Amazing. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. I don't have grandkids, so I'm I'm just really, you know, I was there last week and I get to take him out for a walk. Finally, he gets to get outside. He's had all the shots, and uh, it's like, wow. One of these days, I'm you know, I, I went over to Lauren's place and took care of him during the day, and she went to work. I'm going, hey, this is just like what's gonna it's gonna be like when that's I have what grandkids. it's gonna be like. That's what's yeah. Coming. I can't wait. I'm 68, and everybody's got grandkids, but I got late. I got a late start. My son is. 29 and my daughter's 24 and but it'll happen when it happens but i can't wait i'll be back in texas when that yeah. happens Me i'll too. be here as long as i need to be here i moved back here five years ago because we were real busy and i i needed to be back here recording tv opry's you know and uh catch the tour bus fly out here do the days but i for many years i raised my kids in dallas i'd go to dfw or love field and fly to poughkeepsie do the show fly home come to Nashville, do whatever we had to do. And one of these days I won't need to be here as much and I'll be back in the great state of Texas. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. you, Taking you care of my kids. Rudy, Rudy you and, and me both. Kids. Rudy, yeah. you, and me, you and me both. I plan, I plan that very same. Where are you from now? Houston. Houston area. Okay. I was born in Worth? Galveston. I was born in Galveston. Okay. Well, we yeah. were raised out in Odessa. Oh yeah. Yeah. That West was, Texas. Yeah. West Texas. I, played a show I missed the great state of Texas. Where'd you play there? I, I miss it. I play there quite a, every time, chance I get. I play nowhere this year, but my, one of my last shows of last year was, was a Christmas party in Midland for a, oh. you know, a private, or, uh, yeah. pri a private investment group of some sort. I don't know. I got a lot of friends in Midland. Still yeah. got a lot of friends in Odessa too. You probably knew some of them. I'm sure I'm, I'm positive you did. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. I know the, the people I know in Midland know them probably, you know, because yeah. they've been there. My, I got some buddies there in Midland been there for their right. whole lives. Yeah. They're older than I am. Well, these are a lot of oil people. A lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm sure you know. Yeah. Them. How about Joe Biden saying he's going to shut down fracking, shut down the oil business? Yeah. And then lying through his what? teeth saying he wouldn't. And then I, I've never said that. I've never said he's gone. He's on tape like 20 times saying that. I wish, and I've been hearing the reports and, it, it, no matter who says it, it just had to be him. And they keep talking about, oh, we're going to lose jobs. And you know how many people, how many fracking jobs and oil industry jobs? How about $5 a gallon gasoline, people? Are you ready for that shit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or more? Yeah, or huh? more. Say that. How, how do you like paying five, six? And we did it one time, what, a couple of years ago? It got close to yeah, four or five dollars. It was four something. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all with developing reliable alternative sources. Absolutely. But <laughs> until that shit is the same price and can yeah, be we done. have to transition properly. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and he, the, the he's kind of backpedaled to that position. He he, he oh, did backpedal. I mean we had a transition. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, did. he totally he did. backpedaled. Absolutely backpedaled. But first, he said you're going to shut it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, because if the people in front of him that he's talking to, it's kind of like the Dixie Chicks years ago when they were over in at the UK. Well, we hate we have Bush. Bush. I'm not. I'm ashamed because because they speak to their audience. They speak to whoever's right in front of them, trying to win them over, not knowing that that word's going to get out. I mean, we have video for everything now. So Biden is on tape, I mean, 20 times saying he's going to shut down fracking, shut down the oil business, because he, he's talking to people that wanted to hear that. At the it, 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 I, you know? What gets me is I don't believe, I can't, here's the scary part. I can't but understand But that's a lot of politicians, people, right? They always speak Oh, yeah, to, a lot, a right, lot of like, politicians. Absolutely. Whoever's, I hate Absolutely. it. You're whoever's right, right I, in I front of that. them. Whoever's right You're in right. front of them. You're right. You're right. I but we that. just got to hope that the American people think this through. But, 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 and I'm not saying- Instead of just- Let's just say, I'm not, let me interrupt you for a second. I'll pause. Sure. 
don't lose your train of thought, please. And my, my apologies in advance. Well, I've already lost it. I didn't have much train of thought. But at least I mean, me. this, this isn't to say that a bunch of crap doesn't fly out of Trump's mouth either. We're just, on oh, the, yeah. we're, we're on the oil sure. topic right now. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, go on, Rudy. Well, I would just say in general, I hope that the American people and a lot of young people bless their hearts. All I can say is I look at that and hear that defund the police. Okay, we'll start. Where do you live, young lady? We'll start there. <laughs> and we'll let everybody know that guess what? As of tomorrow, this area code will not have any police. How do you like that crap? Huh? They yeah. don't yeah, think that, this stuff through. That's a bad term. That, that's not the right term. Uh, I know what they mean. Well, I know what some people mean when they say it. Um, you know, more just looking at it, right? And figuring out where all the money goes. But I actually think they should get more money, to be frank with you. I think the police deserves more money, more training, more. Let's lean into it. Let's, if we really want to solve the problem. That, that's going to be the bigger issue. But yeah, that, that term uh, is, is, you know, all wrong, you know, full disclosure guys. I mean, I'm just honest. I'm always honest on the podcast. I voted for Biden. You know, I love telling, I told, I'll tell everybody on the podcast. I mean, that's what I, I, I knew. You, I, I, I knew you're a Democrat because something you yeah. said before we got on here, I can't remember, but it's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not- I, I mean, I live in Texas. I'm all my friends are all over the place, right? We all have all kinds of beliefs right amongst us. So honestly, it's not even anything I define myself or my friends around that does that make sense like liberal or democrat yeah. it's usually the last thing i find out about somebody could be years it's, down the road in fact it's the radical segments of both sides i agree that get uh, us into trouble. i mean that's where, that's where that's where we get into trouble and that's where people up in dc aren't doing their jobs that they refuse to to cross the aisle and com- shake hands and compromise and work out yep. deals. And, and that's the failure of, of that's their failure. That's on them. I mean, You're right. And we suffer because of it. That's the horrible that's right. part. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I agree. I agree a hundred percent with you, man. I, I, I mean, I totally agree. Everybody gets caught up on the, the, the two extreme positions and as if there's no middle and that's just not true. <laughs> Absolutely. We, and not, and not by everyone. I don't mean just us, uh, the, 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 the regular normal U.S. citizen out there. I mean, I mean, the people that are supposed to know the difference and do their jobs up there and get, yeah. and get, shit, and get shit done. Yeah. You know, they, they don't they just don't do it. And it's crazy to me. Crazy. hundred percent. I, I, ju- started. I just deal. had to I just had two politicians <clears throat> on the podcast. My first time having well, current like actually running for office politicians. I've, I've had people that were in office before, but, you know, they're it's a different mentality once they've been out of office. So th- it was a different type of conversation that I hadn't had before, honestly, with with people. And it's um, yeah, it's a little dividing, to be honest with you, just t- you know, each of them that I talked to and. Yeah, it's scary, to be honest with you. Um, I hate yeah. politics. To be honest with you guys, I hate talking about politics. I hate dealing with it. I was, I'm was, i a very much, it's in the background of my life sort of thing, you know, to be yeah. frank. Yeah, I wish it were in the backgrounds of everyone's lives. We'd be. I'm about, I'm about ready to talk about this soup over here on the stove that I'm going to get to here. <laughs> Can we wrap this thing up here, guys? I love you. Some Absolutely. soup over there. You got chicken curry, George. You're missing out. Chicken curry uh, soup. That's what he's about to eat. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna leave a stain for days. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> a nice yellow stain right in the whatever you're care. cooking. You're, I you're don't care. did you really cook curry? No, Steve's wife. Steve's uh, Larry's wife, Janice, and Steve's wife, they're great cooks. And they and Larry and Steve and I love oh, this time of year because we like to eat things out of a bowl, like soup. And we love tortilla soup. I love it. Chicken uh, tortilla. Vegetable yeah. soup, chicken soup, any kind of soup. Yeah. Salad, a, uh, a pasta slow- stuff. You just eat out of a bowl, you know. So do, they use a, I got do, they some, use a, do they use a slow cooker? I love those. Man, I love that. I, I think so, or a big old pot of some sort. But uh, Yeah. Yeah, they're it's great kind of, cooks. They have on all day kind of thing. Just yeah. this whole, yeah. man. Yeah that's, that's gonna, yeah, that's how you do it. Slow cook it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good stuff. So, I'm jealous. I got some of that. I got some of that right over there. Well, I'm coming over. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it's going to be I'm, gone by the time I'm you in. get here. Sorry. <laughs> Come on. You got- <laughs> I'm giving you any. Get your own. That's so Nashville. That is so Nashville. 
<laughs> I ain't sharing shit with you, man. They might not let you back in, t- in Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute now. That's, that's, that that's, not very, that's, not, that's just not very Texan. That's not very Texan. That's, very, that's, that's not true. share. That is true. That's not very Texan. You got to share. That's true. In fact, you, give, well. you got to give more away than what you eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That reminds me of that. That reminds me of that movie Stripes where they're like, I don't know where they are, but he's like, no, no. See, if we were in Europe, you'd get the top bunk and I would get yeah. the bottom bunk. But we're in. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember that line? Do you remember that? I don't, but I remember that movie. The, yeah, what a great movie. Who's your buddy? Who's your buddy? Who's your buddy? Yeah. Who's your buddy? Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, uh, guys, guys, I've enjoyed yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I hope you too enjoyed it. You know, I hope this was a good experience oh, this is for you. Oh, great, man. This was fantastic. I, it was an honor, honor to chat with both of you, Rudy. I, you I loved, I loved, uh, I loved hearing everything. Everything you, you just, you just had so many great tales. It was great. Well, great. we, thanks, pal. Appreciate. It. Hope you could. Hope one of these days you have as many tales as we have. And good luck with the career and just. You know, get out there and get after it. You know, yeah, get man. True to yourself and doing my thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do your that. do your thing. Go yeah. do. Go be the best George Ducas you can be. Yep, absolutely, man. Well, I, I I hope to see you down the road or on the street or on Franklin Road or wherever the heck. I'll probably yeah. be on the street. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear this hat just in case you. Well, hopefully we'll <laughs> hopefully we'll be sharing a stage here here before too long. Once it all this, you nonsense. got it. Once all this. Hey, nonsense. do you play? Do you play downtown some when they? No, when they're open. No, I do. I do CMA Fest. I do. I do the Opry when they ask me on a rare occasion. Uh, um, you know, I don't do that. No, I I did that early in my career. I played, you know, yeah. bars down there. But no, man, it's been years. It's been years. Um, I would I'd stay far away from I stay far away from downtown. So yeah, that's a that's it's a mess. That's a mess. A lot of place. Well, yeah. it's you know, it's a thriving little it uh, is area. Yeah. It is that. It is that, and it's 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 got its place for sure. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. but anyway, well, good guys, luck, man. I, I've enjoyed the heck out of this. Awesome. I have too. Awesome. So glad, guys. This is exactly what I want. I mean, it's exactly what. I, I I wanted for the listeners was was this conversation. I mean, it's just so amazing. It went way beyond my expectations. So I really can't thank you guys enough. No, uh, it's it's an honor, man. I'm glad to be back on with you. Uh, I'll, I'll you can you can bring me on to be the sidekick anytime. Love it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Wait till you get the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patrick. Thank thanks for uh, picking up one of those hats too. That was really cool. Dude, I got it. But hang on. Damn, oh, right oh, here. Oh. It's in the studio it setup. It's in the. I what have you got? It, it out. is Here. sweet. All right, <laughs> George. I'm gonna leave it right there, buddy. From now there on, there it is. That's nice. That's where it is. I'm that's honored. Is. I'm I'm honored, man. I'm honored. All right, take guys. care. Y'all be Rudy, good. Be go safe, get you, George. Be good. Take care. Y'all come horns. All right, look at horns. Wreck them, tech. <laughs> All that's right, right, guys. Y'all bye be bye. good. God Y'all be bless. safe. Bye bye. Take care. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Until next time.